Hidden deep in the hills of New Jersey is a mine where 120 years ago, a truly enlightening discovery was made. We're on the property of the Sterling Hill Mine in Sussex County, Northwest New Jersey. Bill Croft is a geotechnical engineer at Sterling Hill and an expert in the region's geological history. There were over 400 iron and copper mines in the state of New Jersey. Starting in the 1600s, early Dutch settlers flocked to the area in search of two valuable resources. Copper was used to sheath the hulls of ships, and along with iron, was in everyday objects, tools, and weapons. Several attempts were made to extract the precious ores with little success. However, the Dutch didn't leave empty-handed. Their efforts led to the discovery of an unidentifiable mineral. So this is a piece of ore, this black material, and this is what fools a lot of people, is called Franklinite. And when this weathers out in the atmosphere and rain hits it, it starts to get a bronzy color. The bronze-looking material was like nothing anyone had seen before. And some of the rock was even sent to Wales in the UK in 1772 for further research. It wasn't until decades, even a century later, did they figure out it was zinc. By the 19th and early 20th century, zinc was in high demand across the globe. It was used to galvanize other metals to keep them from rusting. Its heyday was during World War II when there were ships around the clock to produce zinc, to mix with copper, to get brass. Brass is used in making shell casings. But zinc wasn't the only treasure hidden in Sterling Mine. It doesn't look like much from the surface, but there's over 35 miles of tunnel in this mine. It's over half a mile deep, so you're talking 2,700 feet deep. That's more than twice as deep as the Empire State Building is tall. Yet the most impressive parts of the mine are not visible to the naked eye. So this looks like regular rock, and this is regular rock, but we're heading to a very special area where we're actually going to be in the ore body. This amazing discovery was almost missed by early miners until Thomas Edison became interested in the industry. In 1890, Edison invested nearly $2 million in an operation that employed over 500 workers. He introduced new techniques in blasting, conveying, crushing, and magnetic separation, and of course, electricity. Prior to Edison's involvement in the industry, miners worked strictly by candlelight, which was not an ideal working environment to uncover hidden treasures. Now we're coming into the region where our rocks are world famous, where they're really gonna blow us away. Wait till you see this. Thanks to Edison and electricity, the miners got more than they bargained for. You'll see why in a second. Look at these minerals. Look at this. Amazing. No other place on the planet. Such beautiful colors. With the help of electric lighting, the once unlit rocks and minerals buried in the ground turned a vibrant orange, pink, and green. Amazing. The miners never realized these hidden fluorescent effects were here until Thomas Edison's light bulb. But electricity was still in its infancy, and the miners were very cautious using it. When you throw the switch, there's an air gap in between, and it's quite a large air gap. We ionize the air in between, and we get an electrical spark that jumps. The electric sparks contain a wavelength of ultraviolet light that reacts with the minerals. You can imagine like it was back in those days, but it had these beautiful hidden colors that were revealed under sparks. I never get tired of this. This is what ignited my love for science. The miners discovered the glow created by the fluorescent rocks could make their work underground a lot easier. It wasn't long before they used these magical colors that were hidden in the rocks to not only locate, but identify various minerals using this light. When the rocks turned green, it meant the miners were getting closer to the zinc ore. 
The green happens to be the ore of zinc called willemite. It's the color of money, so we'll go after it. Yet the spark that provided the light didn't last for long periods of time. So the miners took Edison's lead and came up with an ingenious solution of their own. In the late 19th century, fluorescent mineral deposits were discovered buried within the Sterling mine. Apart from its aesthetic value, the glow could help locate valuable zinc ore deposits below the surface. Miners relied on a short electrical burst for illumination, but to maintain a constant energy source, which would allow them to go further into the cave for long periods of time, the technology needed upgrading. They improved upon the spark by raising the voltage, and they could carry these around. The device they created, the iron arc, runs between two iron electrodes that produce a continuous current. It has a transformer and is controlled by a switch. And that's where we create the iron spark that will emit the ultraviolet light. Check this out. However, utilizing this new technology came with its own challenges. You're walking in a mine that's dark, tripping hazards, your feet are wet, your hands are wet, and you're carrying a machine that's got 75,000 volts. But to see these colors, to pinpoint where the ore was, was definitely worth the risk. Since they were discovered, the extraordinary fluorescent rocks have amazed the miners working in the tunnels, like former Sterling Hill miner, Doug Francisco. Boy, this brings back memories. Ah, I'm home. You could take home specimens. One guy was bringing a large chunk of ore on the cage to take home with him, and he dropped it, and it broke the foot of a guy down below him. From that moment on, the mine said, you can take home specimens, but they have to be able to fit in your lunchbox. Drilling and blasting these rocks took great technical skill, and miners were required to follow specific procedures. Although newcomers sometimes learned the hard way. A couple weeks after I started, they put me working with this old timer. We had spent six hours drilling this pattern out. At the end of the shift, we're gonna fire it. So we go around the corner and he bends down and I started to lean down. I said, you're not gonna, and boom, he set it off. And literally I was 15 feet away around the corner and it knocked me on my butt, blew my helmet off, and he's just laughing and laughing. Another lesson for the new guy. <laughs> 